Welcome back to the Live with Purpose podcast. We in here, it's your girl Lisa. And as long as you're alive, you have purpose. Amen. And I'm here with my friend Karis. Hello. Hey girl. Hey girl. So me and Karis have known each other for a little over a year, but it feels like longer. Forever. And the talks get deep. Mm. Convo's convo. You hear mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so today's uh, topic was just inspired by a literal conversation we have. I was like trying to think of what episode me and Karis would do. And I was like, you know what? This is the episode. This is it. <laughs> it's happening right now. Um, so Karis, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Oh boy. Well, um, I was born in Baltimore, raised mm-hmm. in Nashville. Um, moved back here junior year of high school, went to college, came back here in August of 2021. And my life has been a roller coaster ever since <laughs> period so <laughs> that's, here we are life be life in. um okay so Karis, what is something life has been teaching you lately oh boy um so many things um one that i'm like currently in right now is that i don't have to know everything mm-hmm. um i think i used to feel um the sense of like pride or like um I don't know exactly what that feeling was, but I would just feel something where it's like I had to like have the answers for everybody and everything. Um, And the last year has like thrown me so many situations and scenarios where I just did not have the answer. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also been in situations where people have asked me questions, uh, fully believing that I would have the answer. (laughs) I just haven't. Um, And I, but I've, I've also found though me not having the answer has given them comfort because um i think in some people they they kind of look at me i go to church i do all these things whatever and they think i might have the answer and i don't so if i don't then it means we're all in good company like (laughs) we're all um whatever and i think i've also learned to just lean on the lord and like let him come up with the answer let him give me the answer in his timing and not be so not put the pressure on myself to like have it all together and have all the answers in the you know, um, to solve everybody's problems, but that's not my job. So yeah. being comfortable with the I don't knows. That's good. It's giving lean not on your own understanding. Huh? 110%. Yeah. And um, thank God we don't have to. Right? Because <laughs> that's, that's the other thing. Knowing everything sounds exhausting. Oh. Oof. Always Ain't being, it? like, always being right. You would never learn anything. Mm-mm. Nope. You would never grow. Nope. It sucks being wrong. But, like, if you're always right and you always know anyth- everything. What's the purpose? Yeah. Huh? We are live with purpose. Ah! Huh? <laughs> it's happening in real time. Yes. I love I love not knowing. I love not yeah. knowing and I love being uncomfortable. That's something mm-hmm. that I've really tried to press into this year because the second that I'm comfortable or I feel like I've got it covered, mm-hmm. I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, and my life has proven that. So yeah. I love that. I don't love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. In the moment, I hate it. Like, it's yeah. awful. And it's like, Lord, please, why have you forsaken me? But, <laughs> My um, God. Elohim. <laughs> Elohim. <laughs> um, but when I'm like, because I think right now I'm coming out of something. So, yeah. like, as I'm coming out, I'm like, oh, that was beautiful. Lord, I see what you were doing. But mm-hmm. in the middle of it, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. I also think if I knew what was going on, I'd probably ruin it. Oh, every time. Because I think, A, I would, I have like, I think humans, I think it's a human thing, but it may just be a me thing. We have the tendency to want to rush to the end. And like, to your point, like we just said, you won't grow that way. You won't learn that Mm -hmm. way. But also like, what fun would it be? I think I'm learning more to enjoy the journey. Yeah. And enjoy the process and getting there. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's hard, obviously. And there's dark moments and mm-hmm. things but i feel like all like there's nothing that's happened or that like, even i brought upon myself that i would change because it's made me who i am right now sitting on this couch and mm-hmm. i'm grateful for all of it because i wouldn't have the knowledge and the understanding and the grace and the empathy um for myself and others if i didn't go through x y and z um so as much as it sucked at the time, can I say that? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's um, <laughs> but as much as it was just so hard at that time, now I feel like I'm just so grateful. Like I literally, like I, if I had to go back, I'd do everything the same mm-hmm. just so I could have the re- revelations and the knowledge I do now. 
big empathy energy. Oh, empathy. Always. I think that's the number one thing. I think that's why we go through things a lot mm. of times is because one, it's easy to judge someone else's situation. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing is feeling like seen and making other people feel seen. Yes. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what God's been teaching. I love that. Yeah. Retweet. If you will. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so, okay. So we're going to get into today's topic, which it's, it might get deep. It might not. It'll it probably could be, get deep. But it probably will. So the topic we want to talk about is authentic self. But then we also want to talk about like public self, private self. And this conversation started because I was like, I feel fake when I am not 100% transparent. When I am not laying it all on the table, I feel like I'm being fake. <clears throat> However, not every situation calls for all of you or you displaying all your business. Nah. And that is something I'm like learning and leaning into. And so we were talking about that because we both really value transparency. Yeah. And honesty. And, and it also, in the conversation, it was also like the vulnerability aspect of that. Yeah. Because it's like who do you give your vulnerable self to? Mm -hmm. And then like we kind of, it was like an ongoing, we just kept on opening more and more doors. You <laughs> went deeper and deeper <laughs> until we had just been so philosophical. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then here we were. Yeah. So, okay. So what, how would you define authentic self? I don't know. I, I feel like when I know, like when I'm being myself, there is a certain glow on me. There's a certain way that I feel. There's a certain way that, people receive me there's yeah. a certain way that i even like perceive myself and i've also seen like moments where i've had it with the lord where i'm like wow like this is who you created me to be mm. um and so i feel like auth me being authentic looks like just being me and whatever that means and whatever space that looks like um i think i used to like kind of shrink up sometimes or like downplay something, my emotions or maybe not say my opinion or um, not speak my mind. And the fact of the matter is, if you know me, I can, I can speak. So <laughs> it's like, speak up, like say what you have to say, like walk in with confidence and like do that. Like God didn't put that in you for you to minimize it. Um, so I think just doing that unapologetically, um, regardless of what anyone might have to say about it, um and just walking in that with full confidence that you are who you are and god stamped it yeah i love that i think for me when i think about it, like from like a spiritual perspective it's like being who god created you to be mm -hmm. in like the highest form Ooh, the highest yeah where it's like this is the root of who you are yeah uh tim ross was talking about on his I don't actually think he was on the No For Sure podcast. What was the No For Sure podcast? Um, and he talked about his superpower being vulnerability. Mm. Right. Ooh, I guess. <laughs> 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 um, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, what is my superpower? And I've always said, like, love is a superpower. Ooh, but I think yes. for me, it's like love and compassion. Mm -hmm. And like part of me being compassionate is me like being emotional. Like a movie, yeah. she will cry. Yeah. A story, she will cry. Yeah. Like <laughs> she is a crier. And like also like I think I feel my emotions very deeply. Yeah. And I can help other people feel the feel their emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is something to recognize. Like, how did God create me and uniquely wire me? to communicate with the world around me in a way that's like special. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't mean that no one else is compassionate. Right. But it just right. means that like, I know that that is something that makes me feel like that's me. Like if I stop being compassionate, I know I've not being myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, that was good. That was good. Cause I remember a time where I'm extremely, we've talked about this. I'm the same way. And I feel like there was a time where like so much, I had let so much like get to me and like, like so much control me and like, alter how I viewed the world and like viewed myself that I stopped being that way. Yeah. And, um, when I picked up on it, it was just kind of like, I, I didn't even recognize myself cause mm -hmm. I just knew that wasn't like who I was at my core and it's a scary place to be. And I feel like, um, thankfully like I was able to work through that, but if you're not like, I don't know, like I feel like the world throws things at you sometimes and you can either let it define you and you can let it like change you or you can still be yourself and be that compassionate, yeah. warm person. 
Um, and it's like, God made you like that for a reason. And I'm slowly seeing why, but like in those moments, like I definitely kind of lost that and it was very scary, but like, I'm grateful that I got back to it. Cause he, he didn't do that on accident. Like it was all very intentional and it's for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it's, those are also the things that I feel people notice the most mm-hmm. in me as well. And so like when that's gone, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, let's go with Karis. Like yeah. she okay. But, um, yeah, people highlight that the most too, I would say. Yeah. And while you were talking, I just had to start <clears> up like, life will put you through things that will either show you who you are or test who you are. Oof. And it's like, I think about like me, like I'm mm. a generally positive, bubbly person. Mm-hmm. I would like to stay that way. <laughs> so if I'm going through something and I'm literally sinking into depression, mm-hmm. like I know it's like, oh, life is testing me right yeah, now. Yeah, like yeah. how faith-filled can you be? Mm-hmm. How optimistic can you be? Can you show up in a space mm. like and still bring, and that's the other thing I think that was hard for me in this whole authentic self conversation is like, I recently had gone through things where like I couldn't show up in a space and smile Mm -hmm. and like be bubbly, which is like how I am. Yeah. And I knew that like I was going through something that like took me out of who I was Mm -hmm. and it made me so sad as if I wasn't already sad with what I was going through. Cause I was like, this isn't me. Like, and I think there are moments where you know, you're not yourself. And sometimes I think it's okay to just feel that like it is okay to be like, listen, my authentic self is bubbly and she'll come back. (laughs) But right now, Mm-hmm. she's just feeling yeah because so she can get to back to that and also go back to the whole being compassionate thing yeah feel for the next person who's going through something and doesn't know how to deal with it like honestly sometimes i think when i about the whole authentic self thing it's like i'm putting the team on my back and feeling all the things i can feel so that one the next person not even the next generation yeah like the next person i speak to yeah doesn't have to sink into this like that's yeah, for me that's good. the motivation behind discovering all of who God called me to be Mm. is so that I can help other people do the Mm -hmm. same because not being that is exhausting. Mm -hmm. Living a fake version of yourself is exhausting. And there's just no point. Like who wins? Like nobody benefits. Like you don't benefit. No one around you benefits. Like it's not a, you can't be a blessing if you're not like who God called you to be. Like how are you supposed to do his work and like walk out his will if you're not authentically you? So how do you think people find their authentic selves? <sighs> um, <laughs> I, I, it was just a deep sigh. Like, I, sorry. I, I feel like for me and my experience, and I feel like, honestly, I feel like every human has to go through their own journey yeah. in their own way. But for me, it was very much like trial and error. Yeah. And big ways and small ways and meaningless ways and the most meaningless way or the most meaningful ways, like everything, like I feel like I, like my whole, everything that I had built up and like made to be me or like whatever, like I had, like God had to break it out of me, like break it down, like, and show me like that, like this is nothing, like this is who you're supposed to be. Um, And it was, it was, it took years and it took so much time and it's still being worked out of me. Like I'm, Mm -hmm. I would say I'm on the up and up of it, but there were a lot of dark moments. There were moments where I even questioned, like, is God real? Like, does God care about me? Like, does God love me? Like I would, I remember like reading his word and like, I'm just like, this can't be true if Mm. I'm going through X, Y, and Z and I'm really suffering here. Um, And I think kind of like really getting like uh, super vulnerable and like real with yourself and the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for so long I struggled with vulnerability and like being um, transparent about my feelings and everything just in, just in general, like it'd be about nothing. So when it came down to like the really hard stuff, it was like, if I can't even tell myself how I feel, how can I tell God? How can I tell a therapist? How can I tell a friend? Like, And so once I was finally, once he finally broke me down to where like I had no choice but to be vulnerable and like admit to myself what I was feeling, admit to myself what was hurting me and have that conversation with him and let him comfort me and like be there for me and like um, give me that peace. It wasn't until those moments where like I saw healing enough to even say like, okay, so like get get to the ground zero where I'm like, okay, like, so who am I? Like, what does this Mm -hmm. mean? Like what is your calling in my life? Like, what am I on this earth for? Um, But none of that could have happened if all of 
the craziness and chaos wasn't a part of it. If that yeah. makes sense, like I needed to be broken down to be built into what God has planned for me mm -hmm. um, and not what I had planned for myself. Who could <clears throat> those plans, huh? It's like crazy to think like the plans that we have for ourselves are only like <laughs> a fraction of what God's like. Not even. Of the grandiose thing that he has in mind. It's so crazy. Like, and you were just talking, when you talked about just now about like, oh, I'd read the Bible and be like, okay, this can't be true. <laughs> I am not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Recently I was reading the Bible. I was like, God, my life don't look like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need some answers. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Like, and then I really just realized like the Bible is like, some things are about the character of God. Mm. That's what we find in the Bible. Ooh, that's good. But then there are things we find in the Bible, which is just like, this is how your life should look. Yeah, yeah. And if it doesn't look like that, like, I'm going to keep it a buck. For me, it was about money. I was like, God, you said I have the ability to create wealth. Where is that? What do you need me to do to do that? Like, <laughs> help me. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> and like, everything he's calling me to do doesn't necessarily yield money immediately. Yeah. But it, eventually in the name of Jesus, it will. You're so But yeah. And that's the thing is it's like the Bible also includes promises, but, and all the promises of God are yes and amen and all that great stuff. But it also gives you a mark to press towards. Mm. Like I do have the ability to create wealth. Yeah. Yes. But in season. Yeah. Yeah. In the season that literally is, I think it's in, literally be. in the same verse. It says, according to God's will and yeah. according to, like literally in his season, in his time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and if he's not allowing me to create wealth that I want right now, mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep, I think it's a test, like a perseverance too. Mm. Cause it's like, I like God is showing like in this season is showing me more of who I am and how, and like who he's created me to be. So that when I do get all the other things that he's promised me, that's like, because also the Bible has the general promises that are promised to a believer. But then like the reason you need the Holy Spirit is because there are promises that are specific to you, yeah, like to yeah. just you as an individual. Yeah. And that's what the Holy Spirit is there to tell you and there yeah. to show you. And so it's like, as you go through these things, we're going through to like get to our authentic self. Mm -hmm. Like that's what's being proven is like, how tr how much do you believe the individual promise on your life? Yeah. How much yeah. do you believe these biblical promises on your mm -hmm. life? Where are you moving towards? Like, what is like, people have said like, he's either good or he isn't. Mm. He's either God or he isn't. Yeah. Like you can't be in between, but it's so easy yeah. to be in between and flip flopping because yeah. it's just like, you're good, but no. Yeah. yeah. No, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is. Yeah. My God. That's good. What That's a really tangent good. we found ourselves on. And it's on. interesting because I feel like as I've learned, because like you're saying like it was like he's good or he isn't. Mm -hmm. And I remember a time where I really just didn't think he was. Right. And now that I've kind of come out of that and I see how good and how intentional and how he's just all in the details. Yeah. Like even the details I couldn't think of. Um, it's just like he's just proven to me. Not that he had to, but right. he's proven to me over and over and over again how good he is and how faithful he is. So for me, it's like as time has gone on, what I've been able to do is like let go and yeah. let God, like mm -hmm. as cheesy as that is. Mm -hmm. It's like the second I was just like, wow, like he is never going to fail me. Like he's going to turn all of this around. He will redeem every last bit of it. The second that I really, truly believe that in my heart it was a game changer. So I've been able to, I think this year was the first year that I've been able to like, not like focus on all of that and not like feel like I, like it was up to me to figure it out or up to me to get to my purpose or up to me to open the doors or and all of that. Like that's like, God's got that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this year it's been like a beautiful thing where like, I've just been like, figuring out like, what do I like? Like, what do I want? Like, what does make me happy? What does it look like for me to walk in a room and be me and walk out and be confident that like, that's who God made me like, and yeah. not, not be looking over my shoulder and not live in fear and all of those things. So like this year has been fun. It's been fun and hard, you know, mm -hmm. trying to navigate like what that looks like. Cause it's also the truth of the matter is like when you start changing and you start trusting God that way and, you start really relying on God for that. And your joy is coming from places that people have nothing to do with. People get mad about that. Yeah. Um, 
So your life starts looking a little different. And that's been something I've had to navigate as well. But I what as hard or as crazy as it will or has been, like, I just I wouldn't change that because it's like I know God is real and I know he's got my back. And yeah. you either see that and you respect that and you're doing this with me or you're not. Um, and I wouldn't do there's nothing that I would do to, like, jeopardize what I have with the Lord or how far he's brought me at this point. Um, yeah. and to that, God is good mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Even in the tough times, mm -hmm. it's just like, if you look back at the tough times you've made it through, mm -hmm. you can see like, this is what he was teaching me. This is who I became as a result of it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And if there's negative things, we can work on that and pray on that. Right. Can't we? Right. Right. But like, this is the purpose. Yeah. Like this is part of it. Yeah. And like, he's good because. I may go through the fire, but I won't smell like smoke. Yeah. Huh? Amen. That's good. He's in the fire with you. Yeah. Mm. The fourth man in the fire. Yeah. My God. Literally. Today. Okay. So I looked up what is the literal like definition? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure this is some psychology thing. I literally Googled authentic self as the first thing that came up. So if you got a problem with it, Google it yourself. Argue with your mama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your true and your own personality, values, and mm. spirit Mm. regardless of the pressure that you're under to act otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. That feels like what we said. That feels like what I've been experiencing <laughs> <laughs> in real time. Yeah. Um, I want to Google what is private self? Because this, I think this is where my beef comes in Whew, here we is go. the difference between private self and public self. Yeah. Okay. So private self is the part of the self that is known mainly to oneself, such as one's inner feelings and self concept. What do you think it means? I don't like that definition. Yeah. Um, because I think private self. Let me let you talk. No! <laughs> I got excited because I didn't like what that said. Um, I don't know. When I think of like private self, public self, when I think of all of that. I I have to think about um, Jesus and yeah. how he like the disciples and like his relationship with them. Right. So to me, like, like you have your, like, I feel like my private self is, it is all the things that it mentioned, but my private self, I only share with a very like small select few. Um, and that looks very different than the public self, like me sitting right here. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the private self is a lot, more vulnerable um i would say anyone's private self could be more emotional um it could just be more just like real and raw as far as like what's going on and how they feel and how their perspective on the world and what that means whereas like if you just see them walking down the street or if you just go and talk to a stranger you're not necessarily going to get all of that um from them in that conversation yeah um I think your private self is also like, like that's like, it's like a big part of your heart. Like hmm. it's a big part of like, I feel like that's like kind of like the makeup of who you are in a way. And I feel like you have to navigate how to, where and when to like bring that out of you um, yeah. in certain relationships and situations. So I don't know. I've like, I get what they're saying, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, it looks different in this day and age and how you navigate things, social media conversations, um, and different things like that. Yeah. I think someone having access to your private self yeah. is a privilege, mm -hmm. like a privilege. Yeah. Like, that's why I think to me, I haven't dated, <laughs> but when I do, I imagine the journey will be a lot of like, I'm going to need God directly to tell me to open up to this man. Yeah. Because 100%. the access to my private self that I give to my family, mm -hmm. that I give to my friends, like to really see my heart yeah. and the intricacies of what's going on in my life yeah. and to even check me. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Accountability. I am not just taking anybody's instructions or like input. Yeah. So, like, to me, like, your private self is so vulnerable. It's, like, the most vulnerable version of you. It's still the authentic you. Yeah. But, like, 
how we were talking about with uh, authentic self, it's like who you are, even when you're provoked differently. I think your private self is provoked differently and can kind of be honest about like, y'all being provoked differently. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know, like when I was talking about like being bubbly and fun, like I know I'm a bubbly and fun person, but right now I don't feel like it. Like yeah. being able to share that with someone yeah. is your private self. That was, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I like on the, my public self is very much, hey, like I'm turned on, like yeah. laughing. On is the yes. best way to put turned it. Turned on and off is a switch, man. <laughs> and I think one of the things I've always, I felt like this for a couple of years, but like this year in particular, if I don't feel like turning on the switch, I'm not. Yeah. And it doesn't mean my world is ending. It doesn't mean I'm mad. It doesn't mean I'm like, I hate everyone around me and I'm depressed. It doesn't mean that. It just means I'm, I'm chilling. Like yeah. this is just me. This is me behind closed doors. Yeah. So it's like, you think I'm screaming and yelling in my bed by myself? No. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think like if people, and now obviously like, like I feel like when I'm like that, I'm, that's when my deep talks come out and that's mm -hmm. when all those certain things come out. So it's like, it's not, that's not necessarily appropriate in certain situations, right. but um, it's almost like people don't even know what to do with it. Yeah. And like that, how you take that shows me if I can be share my private self with you <laughs> yeah. because my private self is not screaming and hollering and laughing at everything she sees. Like mm -hmm. my public self very much does. And part of that is just like, you know, you got to work a room and some people just, that's just how you, how the cards fall. Like that's just yeah. how I have to be. So, um, and I enjoy it, yeah. but when in those spaces, but like if I'm chilling at home, I'm chilling at home. Like, yeah. and if I want to have this conversation about my authentic self, I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's very, it's funny. Cause even my friends, like I, not all my friends, I can sit down and be like, Oh, like, do you feel like you're your authentic self? <laughs> like some of them would look at me like, here's what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and I love them dearly, yeah. but I'm not going to call them if I want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, but thankfully, like I have other friends where like, well, well you can be on the phone for hours yeah. and just, get into it and mm -hmm. talk about that so it's also just like but then and then this is where i this is where i've been kind of struggling and i guess this kind of taps into your fake comment mm -hmm. but it like to me and i know this you feel this way but like it's like is that fake right like like is that like am i doing someone a disservice by like um turning it on mm -hmm. or like like what is that me because there are times where like i'll be turned on and like i'll like i don't know like, most people would be like oh like talk to this person or whatever mm -hmm. and in those moments i do and like that's whatever that moment's supposed to be but like sometimes i just feel like dang like i almost leave like maybe they didn't get to see really me like mm -hmm. am i really that person yeah like is that person like my true authentic self yeah like do you have multiple authentic selves? Like, yeah. is that normal? Like, I don't know. I think you have one authentic self, but she can express herself in different <laughs> ways. Like, there's different versions of her. It's yeah. like giving, like, Hannah Montana. Huh? Period. Yeah, Hannah yeah, 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 Montana yeah, 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 yeah. was the public version. For sure. Miley Stewart was yes. the private version. Yeah. But they're all Miley. Yeah. <laughs> At the core. Okay. You know what I'm that saying? Was, like, now I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That but makes so like, much sense. Like, the fans didn't get to see no. Miley, the or, public, but the followers, Lily, and them, mm, the Oliver, besties, the disciples. Let's get into oh. it. There's so many. Not rebels. Jesus and Miley Stewart, and I love that. <laughs> so okay, so let's take it to the Bible. So Jesus, he took Peter, James, and John mm -hmm. to the mountain to see the true version of himself, to see yeah. his private self, authentic self the whole time, but took them up to the mountain to see his uh, his private self he was up there and then jesus was there with um moses and elijah appeared the whole thing peter james and john were outdone yeah. with seeing the full yeah. version of him yeah. on their face like looking away because it was him literally just shining and then he goes back down the mountain he regular jesus again he's his public form of jesus mm. and even if you think about it like the tears of like who gets to see the private version of you like Peter, mm. James, and John saw the most private version, right? Mm. Then his 12 disciples saw a public private. It was like a hybrid, yeah. a public a private. Hybrid. It was like, 
a fan who discovers who Miley Stewart is. You yeah. hear what I'm saying? It was like in the middle. But, but keeps the secret. But yeah, keep yeah. it on the low. Yeah. Then um, there was his public self, which was I'm walking through the crowd and like who touched me yeah. and I'm looking around. Like that version of people that Jesus saw, which speaking in parables, the girls who get to get it. You mm-hmm. hear what I'm saying? Like yeah. that version of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I think when we talk about public self, like, how would you describe that? Like, is that, to me, that's the on version. Like, yeah. oh, I'm on right now. Yeah. Like, I'm being my public self. That's definitely the, my on version. Um, and that, it looks it looks pretty similar, honestly, depending on who I'm around. But I think, like, who I am at work, who I am at church, who I am, like, at dinner, or, like, wherever I am, like, publicly, like, that person is... Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm refining my public self okay. right now. We so, love a rebrand. Yeah. Oh, the rebrand is rebranding. <laughs> um, and it's actually working because the feedback I'm getting is what my, I'm, I'm not actually rebranding, but like, right. since we're saying this, like the feedback that I get, like even from people that I just meet and I'll speak to for 30 minutes or something, mm-hmm. it's all on par with the reprint. Yeah. And so it's exciting because it's also, it's also stuff that I prayed about because it's like, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be like draining. I don't want to be certain things. So I've prayed certain things like, Lord, make me more of this and take this Mm -hmm. away. And so when you're kind of meeting people and, you know, showing up as yourself, it's like to hear, oh my God, like, like you just have such great energy. Like you're so happy. And like people that don't know me, they don't know my story. They don't know anything, but this public self of me that they have met is like relaying all of that to them and they can get that in such a short amount of time. It's like, okay, great. Like, let me keep going. Like I'm doing this. And it's like encouraging. Cause it's yeah. like, I wasn't always like that. Um, and it's like cool to see, but, um, I think like back in the day, my public self was very much like, this is what I, I it was, I, it was on, but it was on cause it had to be hmm. not because that was who I necessarily wanted to be. Wow. And so now my public self is someone that I actually resonate with and I actually want to be. So it's like, it's like fun and interesting to see like the differences in those two things too. That's so good. I never thought about the, who I want to be versus who I had to be. Yeah. Cause I, Ooh, girl, here we are. Here's the we? depth. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the depth. We can it's really crazy. get into it. I really, like, I think I spent a good amount of time last year Mm. being the person I thought I should be, oh my God, rather than the person I really am publicly. Ooh. And that, like, I think right now is, like, the process of God undoing that, where it's like- Did we just have a revelation? We did. Period. It's like- This is good. (laughs) This is real good. It is. I think it's like, yo, like- you saw, gl- who I'm like, feel like the Lord speaking. He's here. Uh, you saw glimpses of who you could be through this past year, but who I'm going to show you you are is oh, so much emotional. bigger. Me too. It's so much <laughs> bigger than what you even experienced in the past year. That's really special. Well, guys, we're going to go cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Wow, Lisa. Yeah. Y'all, we finna wrap this up. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Uh, things got emotional. <laughs> things got really real, really quick. Uh, so I'm gonna tell y'all. Okay, I looked up. What does public self mean? <laughs> How we are seen, mm. or perhaps not seen, by those we would consider the objects of our gaze. Mm. These public self and private self definitions <laughs> have not been hitting. Not really. I don't like that either. I like what What's we said better. What's your definition? Better. I think just being on, that's the public self. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's not authentic. Yeah. But I think, like we talked about in the beginning of this conversation and how we just had a whole revelation of like the authentic you is being revealed in real time. And there's deeper levels of you that you haven't even experienced yet. Holy Spirit, what are you doing here? <laughs> Ariana, what are you doing here? That's how I feel right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, he's supposed to be here. I want him here. <laughs> yeah, please stay. Yeah. <laughs> but literally, the authentic you is being revealed every, like, in real time. 
And I think it's okay to show up differently in different spaces based on how much you know about your authentic self. And that is the revelation. Yeah. The journey. Yeah. It's not about the end. It's about the journey. Yeah. And if you don't, like, if you don't have the journey, then you can't have these moments where you're like, whoa, God is good. God is faithful. He's covering me. I'm becoming myself. Like, you can't have those moments. You just get to the end and that's just what you are. Yeah. And you, you don't, there's no, you're not grateful for it. You're not, like, appreciative. You're not like, wow, glory to God. Yeah. You're just like, oh, I'm wet in wealth. Like, yeah. whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Like, the journey is what makes your relationship with the Lord what it's supposed to be so that when you do get to the end and when you yeah. do get to the promise, you're like, wow, like this was not because of me and only yeah. because of him. Yeah. Please talk! retweet. Talk about therapy. <laughs> I didn't even have therapy this week. Lord Jesus. <laughs> this is just God. <laughs> yes. He Ooh. is working. No, we do support Jesus and therapy, mm. professionals and therapy and Jesus. Yeah. All together at once. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's so good. Well, Karis. Mm, Lisa K. Satchel. What do you feel like? Did we already say the takeaway, you think? Or you think there's another takeaway from this episode? <sighs> Th- this kind of a topic, honestly, is one of those things where, like, I, like, I feel like I take away something new every time. Mm-hmm. But, like, I think it just all... And this also goes back to what we were talking about earlier, like before we started filming, but like nothing matters. Yeah. And and so it's just like, like I've been like, one of the things is like, whether I'm talking about authentic self or like just something like in this spiritual, you know, realm, it's like at the conclusion in all of those conversations to me is like, nothing matters. Like Mm -hmm. all I need to worry about is me and God's relationship and everything else will find itself um, and work itself out in whatever way he sees fit. And it's not up to us. It's not up to us to have it figured out, to have the answers, to um, control anything. And yeah. I'm just like, even in a moment like this, I'm just so grateful that it doesn't. Because we were just talking about this before we started filming. Yeah. And we're just sitting here, you know, chatting up a storm. Yeah. And here we have an answer to one of the questions we were asking mm-hmm. earlier. And like, we didn't know that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and if we knew the answer, we wouldn't have had this insane moment where we're in awe of God and his faithfulness and how good he is. Yeah. So it's just like, I just feel like the circle is like ongoing, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like different levels of like revelation yeah. in a way, like how he works and how he shows up. Um, and part of that is that we were able to show up here and be our authentic selves. Mm-hmm. So. Amen. It's giving seek ye first the kingdom of God. Period. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Added unto you. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> that was great. Oh wow. Yeah. So in summation, nothing matters <clears throat> but God. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Don't worry about it. He's got it. Ugh, he has to. Because <laughs> you can't do it by yourself. Oh, no. You simply cannot. You don't have the capacity and to. And thank you, Jesus. I don't. Listen, I don't thank want you. to do it by no. myself. Uh-uh. That sounds exhausting. Zero stars. Sounds like she's not making it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> not death. <laughs> okay, where can the people find you and follow you, Cares? Oh wow. Um Instagram. Okay. Cares dot joy. K A R I S dot J O Y. That's my social media for everything. Yeah. Um we or underscore. But like Cares Joy is the brand. Mm-hmm. Um Soon there will be other places that mm-hmm. we'll hopefully get there before the new year starts. We'll see. Jesus. Yeah. Um, you can follow me at Lisa K. Satchel on all the social media platforms. You can follow the podcast on Instagram at live with purpose pod. And that's about it for us. Um, today was a day. I knew this was going to go somewhere where we started. And you had to think when you, when you woke up, you yeah. got a word. <laughs> Listen, it's, it, he, he's, he's dropping them yeah also if you're interested in more we talked about with like you know nothing matters but it does with god <laughs> kind of vibes i definitely recommend reading ecclesiastes in the bible yeah <laughs> um I, you know the people don't always yeah, know yeah, yeah, <laughs> um sure. ecclesiastes and um if you go on youtube and search ecclesiastes the bible project mm-hmm. watch their video about it because that's really what sparked our conversation before this 
about like nothing matters except for like God, your relationship with God and what God is telling you to do and be mm-hmm. obedient. Period. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being here today. Anytime. Um, yeah. Appreciate you guys for listening. Love you guys. You're the Bye. Best. Bye. <laughs>